Welcome back to Game Dads Play Games. Hey, everybody. Playing Children of Morta. More Children of Morta. Morta. More Morta. I am playing as John. As you do. As Archer. Yeah. Although, when I finally get my hands on the controller, I'm going to show you how to play the little kid. Yeah. No, I, I imagine it's attacking while moving back. Uh, sort of. I actually often dash through the enemies and then attack them from the other side. Oh. Uh, but it, it's situational, right? But for the most part, yeah. Ooh. But he, he has a, an ability that uh, you basically... I, I think you deal more damage the more you keep a constant stream of attacks going. Either that or you just attack faster. But either way, um, he he's oh, like... Oh, what the... <laughs> Dude! Yeah. Huh. Nice. Yeah, the little kid is super DPS. Yeah, I mean, he's... With all the... the like how? How? <laughs> too slow, man. Dude. You're too slow. No. You know what? You're right. I've gotta. I gotta predict. <laughs> gotta know where my. Oh. Geez. I like that the enemies don't try to shoot though. If you're no longer in in like within their sight, they'll like they'll actually put down their bow and arrow. You got I me. Mean, you can use that to your your advantage. I oh used yeah. To play a lot of game. Like play a little little uh fun hide-and-seek games when I played as, uh, what's-her-name, the archer. Yeah, but, like, I, I like it because a lot of games, generally, they just, like, have the enemy know where you are always and just, like, keep shooting, even if it's at uh, a wall. here we go. Listen. Oh. Aw. Mamaka, or mama. Truly a divine emotion. Even in these dark days. Love motivated this mother to lay her life down for her cub. <laughs> I gotta say, man, like, the voice acting or the narration, like, it almost makes it even sadder than it already is. And the music, too. I will protect you, little cub. I like that they don't actually attack the cub during that moment, though. Yes, that would be a nightmare. Mm -hmm. Love compels the cub to wake her from this now eternal slumber. <laughs> and it will be love that welcomes this new orphan into the Berksons. Yay. I, I can I can quit now. I'm just gonna So just do, you, gonna... <laughs> <laughs> do you know what he does? Uh not yet. Okay. Because his story is not complete. Ah, okay. That's a really sad moment though. I feel yeah, like there's right. gonna be a lot of that in this game where it's like it's all action-packed, and then it has its moments where it slows down, like, slams to a halt, and then Shoot gets the really sad. Oh my gosh. I hope it does that, actually. I think I, I think that I would be very satisfied with if they make me sad all the time. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Wow. There's an archer. Where's that? There's an archer. Or at least was the archer. <laughs> So we haven't talked much about the mini map, um, but yeah, actually, I was thinking about that. I, I I really gotta say, like, I think the mini map is one of the most useful things in this game. Um, it is a mini map done right. It it's not only a mini map done right, but it's also utilized exceptionally well. So like. And it's really simple for what it is, right? Like, you don't see enemies on it. You you see the character, you see the general location, like, where the walls are, and you see the doors, like, the gates that you've opened. But that alone tells you everywhere that you've both been and need to go. Um, and it makes it really, really intuitive to use. Um, but what's more is that I think, like, the general scenery of the game is very dark most of the time. Um, this area is particularly well lit. There are moments where it's so dark that I actually have to kind of rely on the mini-map to navigate. Oh, um, I can't say really. I mean, I, I guess I've never really thought of it that way. I haven't really noticed too many problems with seeing the atmosphere, but the mini-map, because of the colors they chose, as simple as they did, just a little red and yellow with a gray, mm -hmm. it's very easy. And that, I mean, that's not super unusual, but it doesn't mean that they you know, didn't do well with it. Right, and, and I don't mean like... I use it to navigate like, oh, I can't see where the walls are, so suddenly like, I have to look at the mini-map in order to move around. I mean more like, 
there's because of the very organic feeling that the walls have sometimes you can't actually tell if it's just another path that's like in the darkness or if it's a legitimate wall and the mini map gives you immediate feedback as to whether it's a wall or if it's uh it like an actual traversable path. I can say one thing that I've always disliked about a lot of mini maps is that they they do ignore the organic feel of the map. Mm. Oh, you, you guys are so special. <laughs> God, I hate all of you. I will say, man, like I dodge way more than you do. You definitely brute force it, which for the most part works, especially because you've got the shield right. So it like, it works with John. Yeah, yeah. It does not work with anyone else. Really. I mean, when I when I played as the younger one, I, I never, I was always backpedaling because that's how you played. Um, actually, a lot of a lot of what I do know from games like this come from uh, <laughs> come from Hammer Watch. That's fair. Um, and it's because when you play as the Paladin character. Uh, he's actually, in Hammerwash, he's the fastest character, uh, to, uh, his attacks were just fast. Mm. But the only way you could play a melee character in that game was to attack while, while backpedaling, and you would strafe, so you'd be moving this way and attacking this way at the same time, running from your enemies and cutting them. And that's really have to, how you have to play the younger brother. That's fair. Um, or, I mean, like, I'm sure there's more to it than that, but... See, what the... Still getting hit by that. John's dodge is also really slow. That's another reason why you can't that's rely true. on it as much. Was Hammer Watch a game that we played on the show, like, a year ago? I think it was. We uh, played with... Uh, uh, Harry, yeah, Harry Poppins. Harry Poppins, and I, I maybe Cujo or was it? No, it, it was. I think it was just the three of us. Oh man, yeah. If it's the playthrough I'm thinking of, don't watch it. First of all, it, it's terrible um, because that was back when I think we recorded at your apartment. It was before we had like a usable studio space. Did I just find something? I don't think so. I think that's well, just. The map. It's clear oh, it that has supposed to be a door or something there. Oh, either that's a bug or I'm missing something. Interesting. Okay. Well, what's what's that's the fine. interact button? Oh, right. E. Hmm. Nope. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. Every now and then there are other objects in the environment that look like they should be interactable. Like those stones over there with the glyphs in them. I always thought, think that like I should be able to touch them or something. Got the electro, uh, electro glyphs. Nice. The apocalypse electro, electro apocalypse. All right, well, cool. Floor three is, is so difficult. <laughs> it is. It is tough. It is tough. <laughs> you, you sounded sarcastic there. I was like, all right, yeah, floor floor three. I'm, <laughs> I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm, I'm. My body is not ready for this. <laughs> I hate spiders. Because even when you dodge, you don't dodge. Yeah. And that's the name of the episode. <laughs> Even when you dodge, you don't dodge. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Oh, really? Behind the wall, huh? At least there's no, like, splash damage with those. That's fair. Ooh, those are some really, like, well done... I don't know if they're particle effects necessarily, but, like, the uh, the goop that splashes out of the spiders when you, you kill them. Oh, yeah. Ah! another guy it's, it's, it's right. probably just like the death animation I wonder if they generate the like goop splash as a separate object or if it's part of the like the dead sprite because the dead bodies stay on the ground too but I feel like they go in two different directions sometimes sorry just getting frustrated by bats here no so big deal. Actually, well, that <laughs> Three floors in, still can't kill bats. <laughs> the worst. Dude! <laughs> really? That's uh, it. I've got to block everything. I bought those upgrades. I should really be doing it. That's often. true. If it makes you feel any better, you have as much health as the archer does. And you're at half life. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> I still have a hard time figuring out how to play her, but she, I think she's really interesting. Oh, I, I wrecked her. No I, problem like, I found it interesting because the caves are kind of tight, you know? Um, so, like, you end up having to dodge a lot with her because enemies be just come right up to you, and, and once they're adjacent to you, you, you can't really shoot them, um, which makes sense, but it's, it's hard because you don't have much distance to uh, kill them before they reach you. 
Yeah, I mean, and, and it does take, like, normally, what, two shots to kill things with her, so... It, pretty much with all the characters starting off, at least. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, there isn't a huge difference in damage. Mm. But I will say that playing John, you do feel more powerful. That's fair. Um, because you stun them more when you hit them. Mm. Like, that guy. Alright. And then your actual shield dash actually stuns them. Um, which I didn't know was a thing, and that's actually kind of cool. It's a very short stun, but it's enough to get away if you need to. And that's pretty much what you'll probably be using it for most of the time. Yeah. Just getting one good full health. That's good. Alright. Yeah, contrary to the archer's stun, where she actually stuns them for a full, like, I think maybe three seconds, um, which is usually enough time to pick off, like, two or three of the enemies that you stunned. Yes. You know, I will say, uh, with her, I was much better about utilizing my resources. Um, I used well, you kinda all have to. of my stuff to to fight with her. I mean, I feel like you you sort of have to at a certain point with a character like that, just because the disadvantage is also the advantage, which, like, makes her hard to use. Yes. Small hitbox, too, with that arrow. Uh, I did yeah, find that the true. arrow was a little weird um, and, and tend to not actually shoot out of the bow. Oh, uh, really? It shoots a little, like, awkwardly to the side. Hmm. Um, or at least that was my experience with it, but I could be completely wrong on that. I was using the Steam Controller, so I didn't have a cursor to, like, associate with the uh, aim. That, I mean, actually, that's a that's a good, or a good consideration. Yeah. Dunzo, Magumbo. So what do you think of the, uh, the like, MP in this game? So, I, uh, okay, so I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. Because there's, there's, like, there's two forms of abilities, right? There's the ones that require cooldown, and then there are the ones that... Uh, require MP, and I think sometimes they require both. Like, they consume MP and they still have a cooldown. That actually might often be the case, um, but there are some abilities that I think do have one or the other, and I can't remember what which ones exactly. I'm pretty sure just about everything use, uses both. I um, mean, it makes sense, right? Because yeah. otherwise you would just spam all of your abilities and then let them cool down. And just like sit in a corner and wait for them to all like recover. I guess you could do that anyway. Um, which I don't know if that's a good or bad thing. Um, I mean the the time that it takes to recover that MP at your rate is a little strange because like I'll just I'll just recover my MP now, thank you. Yeah, right. You could just sit here and like I, I feel like there might there should be some kind of dissuasion for that. Um, but at the same time, like I was actually I I what, whoa. <laughs> oh, you're not in a good spot. Oh, that's not so bad. <laughs> nice almost song. Yep. <laughs> you all ready for this? Da -na -na. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nicely my done. Brain, my brain gave out on me and, and went to the right <laughs> this guy. Well, tell you what. Uh, this is the end of the episode. But I think we can at least expect to fight the boss in the next episode. Assuming you don't I die in the make next. It there. Jeez. Oh my. Just don't sit in the acid. That's really all you gotta do. Don't sit in the acid. That's all you've gotta do. Oh. Maybe that's the name of the episode. Don't sit in the acid. Oh no. Now this episode. Oh, that's a lot of red monsters. Red Hot monster. damn. Everywhere I go, there are pools of acid. Seriously, everywhere Ooh. I go, there are pools of acid. Oh my. Just, hey, but you hey, leveled up. Hey, that's Look at a that. good part to leave on. Look yeah. at that. Oh, shield, shield slam. slam. Nice. Wait, uh, wall holding shield. Boom. Oh, so satisfying. Okay, well, anyway, <laughs> that's the actual that's end of the episode. Down. So that's pretty good. That's good stuff. That's good stuff. Uh, question of the day. I, I feel like there's something really good to ask about involving the cub that we saved. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. The, the, pup? the little... The, the cub. It is the cub? The cub. So is it a bear? It looks like a, a canine. Also, your mic stand is really low. I, I hope don't know that... why that happened. Hmm. I haven't moved. Ah. Well, hopefully people could hear you in that. Yeah, that would, that would <laughs> suck if, if you couldn't. Um... Yes, as far as the uh, little cub goes, I don't know. Um, I mean, we don't know what he's he or she is going to be used for. 
Well, Desert Ice Pack 2. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, well, I can tell you that when we leave this dungeon, you'll find out that uh, it will mm. give you a little blurb on the uh, the cub, and everybody's sitting, or a few people are sitting around the cub, and he was infected. Uh, and the grandmother is Ooh. saying she looks at John, who looks really upset about the situation. Like, this full-grown man really sad about this cub, and she looks at him, and, and like, the narrator explains that she thinks she might have a way to fix him, but you need some herbs from the cave. Oh. And then, if you'll notice, up that top right there, it says, I have no objectives. Uh, ah. I think, all of a sudden, you do have an objective. So, so then, then this is the question, right? How would you utilize the, the cub in this situation? Would you just use it to create a new like objective like what happens after you complete the objective would you make it a new character or would it be maybe a new like special ability or maybe it unlocks like a new string of side quests like you could do a lot of different things with that and what do you yeah. guys think would be the most appropriate use for that in this game so far yeah there's i mean there's a lot of things you can there's also the narrative possibility where it's simply yeah, yeah. just you know like gives you a nice little story but i feel like most players would get tripped on that yeah, yeah I, would, I, agree. I love it but I mean, I would enjoy it, but I would probably want a little bit more. A new character would be pretty cool, and then you get to like fight alongside the cub. A new, a new character would be awesome, but that might be asking too much. <laughs> All right. Anyways, well, anyway, so. thank you for watching. Be sure to vote if you want to see more Children of Morda, and uh, vote on anything else you want to see that's in our little voting section. And check out our Facebook page for behind-the-scenes videos. Do all these I, things. Uh, yeah. I'm just found kidding. out that you're, you're doing this today. I can't wait to find out to find you <laughs> making fun of me. Yeah. Oh man. <laughs> Thanks for watching everybody.